Hi, Corey Geiger joined by Neil Riddell here at the Big House, an 18-13 to 13 loss for Penn State against Michigan. And look, we can't really even try to analyze this Penn State football team without addressing, obviously, the enormous issue of the offensive line. This has been talked about all year. But when the line simply cannot function, can you function as a football team? No, I mean, the year that uh, they had the best offense in school history, Kerry Collins, I think, was sacked three times all year. I mean, very rarely touched. Um, That's a big part of it. I mean, I think there's so many issues, though. And it's, it's one thing to be losing. And I think just the way things are unraveling, yeah, you know, the line is really struggling. And they're going to have to play well defensively, which they did. For almost the entire game. Yeah. But, you know, you, the punting broke down. There were special teams penalties, real bad ones, late when they still had a chance. Uh, you know, Christian Hackenberg has a ton of pressure on him. He's going to be an excellent quarterback in time, but uh, he's still growing and dealing with all the frustration of getting hit and, and getting used to a new coaching staff. He's just getting hit so many times, and he's under pressure so much. What I find to be an interesting discussion about Christian Hackenberg is clearly when he's playing behind that kind of line, it puts an enormous amount of pressure on him. And James Franklin did talk about you get into bad habits. But here's the issue, and and I get it. it, It's hard to put a lot of blame on Christian Hackenberg because I understand his situation, but the interception today cannot happen. The interception against Northwestern cannot happen. Well, that was more of a bad read. Today, he just has to get rid of the yeah. ball. You know, Throwing I think across he just his didn't body. see that guy in Northwestern. I think that was this was one of the worst passes he's thrown to Penn State. And, and again, how much of that comes back to the fact that he knows he's going to get crushed? So these are the bad habits that James Franklin is getting in. Well, again, we all know that Christian is so talented, and we know what future he might have. Right. I can only imagine that it would be so unbelievably frustrating for him to know that every time he touches the ball, without fail, he could get pummeled. He got sacked six times, and he carried ten other times. He was clearly hurting at the end of the first half, his left yeah, arm. And, you know, they got another week off. <laughs> You know, no one really wanted these two weeks off like this sequence, but maybe maybe it'll benefit. It certainly, I don't think it can hurt. Well, again, I'll just close with Christian Hackenberg. I don't think he's blame-free, but he's certainly not the biggest problem. Every discussion with this team has to start with the offensive line. But, you know, and yet, they came right down the field initially. You know, they died in the red zone, and that hurt them. They needed a touchdown there, but... Their play calling was good. They were running the ball. So that was the same line. You got Belton yeah. throwing in the Wildcat again. Yeah. What I mean, I really, understand when, you're, when, when you have the best player on the field and you're having you're taking the ball out of his hands and you're having Bill Belton for the second game in a row yeah. throwing from the Wildcat to the end zone. Uh, I don't understand that because, you know, you, you want Christian Hackenberg to really be on board with everything you're doing. Obviously, he was recruited by a different staff. And I'm sure that he liked playing for Bill O'Brien. You could see they had a lot of uh, rapport and chemistry. Uh, he's getting used to a new one. Most people speculate that he might leave if he's in a position to after the third year. Well, you know, taking the ball out of his hands when he gets to the 20-yard line sure isn't going to overly engage him. I can't imagine. He's very thrilled with that. Just uh, you know, some special teams breakdowns again. Some bad puns by Chris Gula. Basically, their last breath was taken away after, hey, Jesse Della Valley's been heavily criticized in punt returns. He had a good punt return, negated, puts him back at the eight-yard line with three and a half minutes to go. They weren't moving the ball all day. They probably weren't going to move it there. Uh, but, hey, look. The fake punt. The fake punt was just, that's an atrocious call. You what what? Why would any coach try that? I don't understand that. Yeah. Now, he did explain it, attempt to, saying they hadn't been punting that way that well. They were at the 37. He figured they weren't going to gain a lot of ground. They might, he, Magula probably would have punted in the end zone and they would have been at the 20. But that's still, the key to this game was keeping Michigan on a long field. And they didn't do it there. And no, they didn't changed do that field with the position because Penn State's defense held, but then Michigan punted Penn State deep, and that's when Hackenberg threw the interception. And that's right. how that's how things can really change in, in a hurry. But hey, the defense. I know James Franklin said that they didn't get off the field in some key situations, and they gave up some big plays. Defense gave up 13 points. You give up 13 points on the road in the Big Ten. 
You, your, you you, your defense played well enough. I give those guys, there's so much pressure on that defense. No margin for error. Yeah. Not a and slim margin for error. They used a lot None. of people. They, they kept their line fresh by subbing in. They used the second team line a couple of uh, times. Hall played real well. Wartman came back and played well. Shoop sent people. He sent uh, Amos on uh, corner and safety blitzes. I mean, the defense is fun to watch. Well, let's do this. I, I want to go a couple minutes longer than we typically do because I, I don't think this issue goes away with the offensive line. I had a great discussion with Nate Bauer from Blue White Illustrated on my radio show about this. How did they get here? Okay, the sanction. The Joe didn't recruit and his staff didn't recruit offensive linemen well at the end. There were seven offensive linemen that would still have eligibility this year who are no longer with the program. So you filter out those scholarship guys. Once the sanctions well, just kick- let me let me just add real quick though. You know, Joe, they had a lot of linemen. They just didn't maybe work out. When Bill O'Brien came in, they had 17. Okay, so then the sanctions came down, and this is a vital point. They went forward with the sanctions knowing that the way that they were going to succeed would, would be to get the best skill people they could. With 15 scholarships, you had to bring in as many skill people as you could. So O'Brien made a conscious decision to not bring in any offensive linemen. So, and, and it's hard to fault Bill O'Brien, but in a lot of ways that's why they are where they are. But he was operating under the notion that they were only going to have 65 scholarships for four years. Right. And ultimately, that's why this offensive line has no depth at all. Plus, you know, you lose Defabaugh, who would have been one yeah. of your better ones. Um, Gilliam went to the NFL as a free agent. He might have been a guy who obviously would have helped this team. That's two. Um, that's two. It would have helped, but... That would have helped a lot. And Donovan Smith has regressed. He's not the player we thought he would be. So, again, it's not just that the the, the line woke up in the spring and there wasn't much talent. This, this goes back four years. This goes back, again, seven players who would have had eligibility. Ricketts, uh, Graham. Uh, Stanko. These are guys that would have still been in this program, but, but if not for one reason or another. didn't necessarily show they were going to be good enough to help the team. Though. Well, but these guys, I mean, if, you, if they had anybody else. They did else, not show that they were going to be better than even what what is out there. Maybe not, but uh, boy, if there was any other options, you know, yeah. uh, that's, well, how, maybe, how does it get better? I don't know. Maybe you have, you have a week off. Maybe you start looking at some of the things that... You started the game with today. There were a few holes. Belton had a 30-yard run. Hit 55 yards in the first quarter. You got uh, Ohio State in two weeks. Yeah. I mean, the way this team has played. College football, anything can happen. But uh, that could get ugly. I'm not saying 63-14 <laughs> ugly. <laughs> got ugly last year. Well, I don't know if it's going to be 63-14. But, uh, boy, this when's Penn State going to win again? It's yeah. Ohio State, Maryland. I mean, how long does this go, do you think? Well, I mean, I still think they have a chance. Um Probably not against Ohio State. They're going to be a maybe a three score underdog, but you know I would like to think that you know against Maryland, maybe even in, in Indiana, they Indiana. could lose all those games. And Temple coming in, I, I don't think uh, you know I'm not ready to put a, a black curtain over the season. Well, um, that's good because you know, this was a co- this was a team that lost three in a row. Their coach is about to get fired, and they were, and they they were, were very beatable. They were without four or five at different times. Like Devin Gardner left the stadium in a walking boot. And they yeah. were without five starters on offense at various points, and yeah. you couldn't beat this team. Yeah. And that's that's right. troubling, is it not? But it's night at night here at Michigan Stadium, a lot of history and whatnot. I mean, it's still not easy to come in here and win. Um, but let's see. I mean, the defense gave you something to build on today, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, a week off maybe – uh, everybody will get a little bit more, uh, try to find a few more of the answers. Yeah, that's the positive. Uh, but the other side is there's Ohio State on the other side. And uh, if this offensive line looks like this against Michigan and Northwestern, yeah. uh, I, I worry about Christian Hackenberg sure. against Ohio State. Yeah. All right, for Neil Redell, I'm Corey Geiger. Thanks for tuning in.